I uh, recently saw my primary care physician. I had never had a colonoscopy. Sure and you're how old now, 42? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I, I had a Cologuard, which since, you know, so they sent it to my house and I sent it back in and, and um, thinking it would all be fine, but lo and behold, it came back positive. So, um, so Shabby Poor calls me and says, you know, don't worry, I'm sure it's just a polyp. And so the uh, first thing I did was I texted. You did. <laughs> <laughs> you did. So I had a tiny polyp, as you yep, guys yep, both yep. know, and everything's fine. But, um, and then I, we had this educational event here um, a couple of weeks ago, and Anton uh, spoke, um, was one of the four speakers, and uh, just did a phenomenal job talking about colon cancer and how important it is and uh, how important screening is and so I thought um, after my experience which I thought was phenomenal and after I having worked here now for about eight years eight eight point eight, eight point five years I think that the people in Los Angeles and around the world just need to know how great it is and you guys are two of the guys that um, help make that happen the name of the game is to detect adenomatous polyps, which are potentially pre-malignant polyps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to take the time and, and effort to look at every square centimeter of the colon during that time. You know, I, I said earlier that uh, uh, that that particular day and having that colonoscopy was one of the best days of the last of the last year I've had. It was so I woke up so it, it was, you know, the the uh, the staff was excellent. Mm -hmm. I, I felt great. I was ashamed to, or embarrassed to say that I, I never had one and it was because it was so easy. Yeah. Well, that's that's really the biggest problem. It's the fear of the unknown. Yeah, exactly right. And so, so many people somehow have this negative connotation of what a colonoscopy actually is. Yeah, right. And they don't realize it until they've actually gone through it that it's really not what they thought. Yeah. The prep is the worst part of it. Yes. And the prep really is just entails that you're drinking clear liquids all day and you're taking a laxative. Yes, you're going to the bathroom multiple times. You'll lose a couple pounds <laughs> while you're at it. That, that's a benefit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if your colon is clean and you're an average risk individual, you don't need another one for 10 years. Tim, I have to say, I think this is the first um, you know, discussion I've ever been to that's inspired by a personal experience about colonoscopy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, you know, just listening to you, I'm just so impressed. I, it, it, it's, it's a first. I don't think I've ever heard of I, such such inspirational I words. Agree, I agree. It's all in uh, based on, to Dr. Now, here. You know, I'm not sure if the, the inspiration comes from the propofol or the colonoscopy or a combination there. Yeah, he's a, you know, he's a great I, I guy. Such a, you know, and, and, and also I think the fact that here we are on a Friday afternoon sitting together having a chat attests to the yeah. closeness among the medical staff and right. our commitment to what we do and to the hospital and the quality of care that um, that we aspire to provide, that I believe we do provide. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree, 100%. Um, R Rudy and I have, have actually worked together in one way or another for over 30 years. I think we, you know, we were, dis we were discussing this earlier on, we sometimes take for granted because we all have the, the, the experience of, you know, <coughs> calling a doctor's office and, and, and getting a 1-800 number and then having to be put on hold to call someone else to then find out you can't see the doctor for six weeks or eight weeks. Right. I mean, I've tried as a physician yeah, to exactly get right. some of my patients in. Unsuccessfully, I might add. We have a completely different approach. I mean, the number of patients that have come to us and said, you know, I've had difficulty swallowing for eight months and it took me three months to get into the doctor and then it took another, you know, two weeks for the primary care doctor to call the gastroenterologist. In the meantime, this poor person is losing weight and has esophageal cancer. Right. Um, and then comes to visit us and within an hour, there are multiple phone calls made and an endoscopy is done, an endoscopic ultrasound, imaging, um, a medical oncologist is involved, a multidisciplinary discussion, which is something we take a lot of pride in because here we are mm -hmm. sitting in this world-renowned academic center where a lot of discoveries in the world of cancer started in this building right. and so we've right. we've continued that legacy with all of our patients in terms of multidisciplinary sure. discussion and then we come up with a plan and the 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 result from um, and the response we get from from our patients is 
fortunately, a lot of gratitude for just being there and being available. Yeah, listening to patients. And, and just and, listening. Yeah, exactly right. When you're dealing with complex gastrointestinal problems, it shouldn't take weeks and months yeah. to you know, get teams together or to um, improve communication and to get patients taken care of. And so we, you know, we recognize the value in better alignment with multidisciplinary teams that are you know, closely intertwined, combined with cutting edge research. I, I vividly remember when uh, Dr. Morton, who you know, has this tremendous legacy in the world of um, cancer and surgical oncology, I came to Santa Monica with close to 200 people. Many people around the country thought, well, what is this academic doctor with a whole team of research scientists going to a community hospital? Um, can, you know, can this doctor accomplish the same things? And within a very short period of time, Dr. Morton became the single highest funded investigator from the National Cancer Institute in this building in Santa Monica at this community hospital. Right. And I think that has many ways set the precedent for, for, for a lot of us mm -hmm. in terms of training. And we try and bring that into a, an aligned digestive health program uh, that involves great clinical care, research, training the physicians of the future, and working closely with our scientists. Um, it's, I think one of the um, traps that, that a lot of physicians fall into is that they work in silos. Yes. They work alone, they work in, and they don't communicate well. And that's not always in the best interest of the patient. And, and, um, and the Digestive Health Institute provides us a vehicle to provide better care, more accessible care in a community hospital.